All right, I wrote some, uh, I wrote some software. And so uh, let's see here. First of all, we need to turn on the power. Uh, <clears throat> what the what the software will do is um, read the buttons so I can I can go up or down. Yeah, let's see here. 3.3 volts. Turn that on. Here we go. Let's zoom down so you can so you can read it at least a little bit here. Can you see that? There we go. Uh, MSEG PE. 64 or 102 filter. So if I uh, hit the up button that it'll count up and if I hit the down button it counts down. So we should be able to see and it's talking to all the filters so the the uh, um, capacitance will go up and I'll go down. All right so let's see here sorry about the angle on the I'm trying to make that a little bit better there we go. All right so uh, let's see, start frequency, we'll say 100 megahertz. Stop frequency, we'll say 300 megahertz. And uh, we will turn the check, tracking generator on. Uh, and there we have the thing. Let's increase the level here to zero dBm. There we go, now we can see it really, really good. All right, and then uh, let me uh, hit the up button. And, oh, uh, it's moving. So we are talking to the filters, but it's doing weird things. All right, so uh, I think I know what's wrong. So um, there is a command that is serial shift. I believe that's the Arduino command, serial shift, and you tell it which two pins is clock and data, and then it shifts uh, a byte out, and um, this is a six-bit device, but you write eight bits at a time to it, but it only, it only listens to the, to the lower six bits. And in that command, you can also specify whether you want the most, most significant bit shifted out first or the least significant bit shifted out first. And I think I have it backwards for this filter. So um, let me, I'll show you the code at some later video, but um, let me go change the, um, the code, reprogram this, and we'll see if we get a, a better result on our filter. All right, I've gone and changed the code to most significant bit first. Um, and I think that's the right way to do it. And we'll take a look at our filter. So we're, we're at zero right now. And, oh, there we go, it's going down. We're value of six, 13, 20. It goes from zero to 63. Oops, and I was re repeating it, kind of died. Oh, that's a weird thing, huh? That was 27, 34. Oh, it's kind of slumping now, 41. I don't know what's going on. It might be that one capacitor chip that's not soldered down correctly. It might just kind of have some straight capacitance on it. But if I go this direction, it kind of gets longer, and I go that direction, it gets shorter. Let me change the frequency span here to uh, 200 megahertz. There we go. And yeah, I can kind of go in this direction, and then it kind of blips on me. I don't know why, but then it continues. I don't know what the blip is, but there you go. We have a working tunable filter. So I'm not terribly impressed with the sharpness of the filter. Anyway, that was a, a kind of a list of journey on trying to reproduce uh, a particular project. Uh, it, even, if it, even if it worked correctly, I don't have any use for it. It was just for fun. Um, what I did learn though, so every project you're gonna learn something. So. Uh, the first thing I learned was these little chips here are really, really hard to solder down. So I'm going to try to avoid this <laughs> in the future. Uh, this one, I tried to put a little solder on the edge and tried to get, get it to wick under there, and it's just not happening. I would have to remove that chip entirely and put it back on, which is a pain in the patootie. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, but having a nice little board. I love the AT Tiny 814. I think that's my favorite new chip for doing embedded applications and stuff which is underneath the uh, display here. Uh, but yeah, single, single line uh, UPDI uh, programming, that's great. Um, you, you basically only reserve one pin for programming, everything else can be used. Um, yeah, uh, 
it was a fun project, but I think I'm going to end it here. Um, we had some functionality. Um, it would have been better if the other chip was working. That's probably why we're getting glitches or something, the other chip. Um, but for the purposes of education and stuff, I think the video is long enough. And uh, I'll just I'll just finish the I'll finish this video uh, taking a look at the uh, software that uh, that runs this thing, and uh, we'll call it quits. All right, let's look at the uh, at the firmware here. Um, we have two buttons and uh, four capacitor switch capacitor or program I should say programmable capacitor filters U two through U five. And these are the enable pins for those capacitors. Everybody shares a, a data line and everybody shares a clock line, but the enable pins are separate for the uh, four devices. We're gonna be using an OLED display with a fancy font. And uh, whichever value of capacitor, the value of the capacitance goes from zero to 263. Let's set things up. Uh, the buttons need a pull up on them. And uh, when you push the button, it goes low. And we'll set the outputs, set initial values for everything. Uh, set up the OLED display and put a little message on it. And I'm going to have two routines, one called update OLED, which basically takes the current value of the capacitor and displays that. And then update the ca caps, which is take that value also and write it out to the actual uh, digital caps. Um, so we're gonna have a loop that runs here, just waiting for a key press. It's either gonna be the up button or the down button. The up button gets a plus one, the down button gets a minus one. And then uh, you uh, cap things at 63 or zero, and then update the display and update the caps. So update the caps looks like this. Uh, you use the enable line, you set the enable line high, write the data out, and then set the enable line low. And then you do that for the two, three, four, five. Uh, the error that I had the first time was I had uh, MSB first, I had LSB first, but MSB first was the correct way to do it. Um, and then update the display is basically uh, there's one line that's going to be dedicated to displaying the cap value. I'm going to blank that line and then write the new value. So that's all that update OLED does, and that's it. That's the whole, that's the whole program. Super simple, easy peasy. Anyway, um, I'll try to make sure to put these things up on a share site in case anybody cares. And the PC boards will be available on PCB Way if anybody cares. Um, but yeah, it's been a good project. I liked it.